I've been toying around with the idea of like a dreamed symphony as a very interesting analogy for the nature of reality. And so whatever that source or that implicate or that infinite consciousness, um, that, that dimensionless singularity that's indescribable and indivisible, that that is in manifest, whatever the function may be of self-determining its infinity, whatever the function may be, um, it, in a sense, we can analogize what exists right now as a symphony in the sense that all of us are artists in the symphony. And that, again, the idea of the illusory um, uh, individual, the, the artist, just not what it appears to be, but that we we have this like unique contribution like you're going to play the clarinet i'm going to play the piano someone else is going to play the sax and we're even if you play the same instrument you're still going to play a different melody or a different harmony than other people will some people are maybe playing a little bit more out of tune because they're in like the service to self mentality they're still just thinking themselves as the ego and separate and I um, mean other people are in the service to other they're playing in tune mentality um, so and our like slowly our like symphonic evolution has like the the conductor is like the attractor we can say in a mathematical system towards like an Ouroboros or whatever the telos mm -hmm. is so how do you like that like dreamed symphony analogy I think not only is it an excellent analogy, it may be the only viable uh, analogy. Um, and let me try to tell you why. Oh, by the way, I, I would prefer to say that I am the violin being played and you are the cello being played. <laughs> no, I, I like that better. Um, Expand on that too, more for us. Because uh, otherwise you have a very dual thing, right? I am playing the violin as if the violin were outside of you. Uh, and then you have to account for that duality, uh, while if I am the violin being played, I am the result of the play. And that's why I'm different of you, from you, and you are different from somebody else. We are all unique notes being produced uh, by this okay. underlying uh, instrument. Um, and, and that, look, the idea of notes appeals to vibration. What is a mm. note? It's a vibration in air, which is produced by the vibration of a, uh, a string, uh, or a hammer, uh, or a column of air in a in a uh, in a in an organ, um, and it is crucial to have this as the metaphor. It's the only metaphor I've found so far because it allows us to make sense of diversity, if all there is is oneness. It's the only way for you to explain diversity if you postulate that only oneness is truly yeah. real. Yeah. Um, because diversity is then the variety of vibrations or the yes. variety of excitations of that oneness. Yes. Um, uh, if it, look, a guitar string can, you can produce different notes with it by plucking it with, in different ways or by holding uh, the, the chord at different, different points, different, holding the string at different points. Um, but there is nothing to any one of those very different notes other than that one string. Uh, right? Uh, the only thing that's going on is the string in movement, but there is nothing to the note but the string. If you remove the string, there is no note. Uh, it's like a ripple in water. There is nothing to the ripple but the water in movement. You can't take the ripple out of the water. You can't do that. If you take the water away, there is no ripple. The ripple is the water. There is nothing to the ripple but the water. Yet, you can have ripples of different frequencies, patterns of movement, heights, uh, momentum, direction. I mean, it, it, that's how you get diversity from oneness. Yes. It's, the, it's the metaphor of vibration. So I think you're right on. Wow. I love that. And I know that uh, Sri Aurobindo said that the, um, the, the diversity of the oneness is the mathematics of the infinite. And, uh, yes, uh, and, and, and that bring, uh, look, even uh, science is coming, well, a philosophical part of science that arguably is not real science, but, but it's very interesting. Nonetheless, M-theory, the idea of M-theory is that everything, uh, all reality is constituted of patterns of excitation of a hyperdimensional membrane or brain, as they call it. Uh, and you can write all the mathematics for that. 
So yeah, even, even physics uh, seems to be heading in that direction. I think it's an yeah. unavoidable insight. Patterns of excitation. Yeah. And I know this is getting so interesting. I'm so pumped for, for further um, explorations here. Who else have you heard talk about the, um, the Dream Symphony? Because I want to research them as well. Oh, I have a good friend um, called uh, Fred Mapser. Um, he is publishing a book next year. Uh, he has a film out called uh, Beyond Me. Uh, and he talks about it, but uh, and I sort of plagiarized him a little bit because he's the one who said, I am the violin being played. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Interesting. I'm not playing, I am being played. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and his idea is that uh, individuals don't really exist, they are illusions. So if they don't really exist, they can't be playing anything because they're yeah, not yeah. there to play to begin with. But they may be pl being played. They may be, yeah. they may be being played. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Good. And or Orobindo also talked about the body as the receiving station for universal music. And yeah, that's that's, uh, that's another metaphor, right? Yeah, it's the same it. metaphor actually. Same same metaphor, yeah. So yeah. this is so interestingly triangulating on the nature of reality and I'm so pumped to embed these beautiful wisdoms that you've been able to share with us, plus also that you've been teaching and that are also from all of the leaders, because both of us, we stand on the shoulders of such massive giants. And this, this big synthesis that I'm super pumped and passionate about is really the it's it's the culmination of like the apex of critical thinking around the nature of reality and and it's really really important to use metaphor it's so important it enables conversation at the highest levels of abstraction exactly and the way you you started the interview you made you said something in the beginning that i didn't react to but i didn't forget you were saying, uh, you know, idealism versus materialism, mind versus matter. These are all dualities. Yes, they are. And they ultimately hold no water because there is ultimately only one thing going on. The problem is, and that's what you alluded to right now, to get into the discourse, we have to make a concession to the current rules of the game. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I make a dualist concession when I label my view idealism as opposed to <laughs> materialism and all the rest. Because if you don't do that, you don't get into the conversation. Yeah, now, yeah, yeah. once you are in the conversation, you can make the conversation implode from within, which is my <laughs> evil plan. But I have to get into it first. <laughs> <laughs> this is such such an interesting way of, of viewing it is that there's this there's this like bell curve that we could call like you know somewhere around maybe 95 percent or so people fit within two standard deviations and we could call this like the evolutionary pacer um, where many people are focused on survival and reproduction and many of the symbols that are being exchanged like memes are of uh kind of that 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 um, they're they're not at the uh, the the edges of the the bell curve at these tails because what's going on at the the regressive tail are still some people violence and slavery and it's all these bad things but at this very progressive tail there are people beyond two standard deviations that are the ones that are at the highest levels of abstraction that have to then create some sort of stories and metaphors yeah. like we got to do some Harry Potter. Um, Pixar, Walt Disney style communication of the stories to get um, the center, the evolutionary pacer for people to kind of like level up, like we're shooting yeah. portals in a sense for people to jump through. And like you said, there has to be uh, sometimes this like concession just because you can't bypass the gatekeeper yep. unless you do these concessions or maybe if you embed the stories in animations or music or other things but even then like i i, I really like your yeah, point we, on we need myths we absolutely need the myths uh, otherwise otherwise we don't have a democratic process so we need modern myths and we need to take myths seriously not literally Seriously. Seriously. Yeah. 
Ooh, Bernardo. Wow. Such a powerful conversation. Thank you for joining us on the show. I had a lot of fun. It was a, it was a pleasure. I just looked at the clock. Now it's been almost two hours. I had no idea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 